All right, so the next project we're gonna work on is this front section of the bus. And so we've done the ceiling all the way to here and we have one seam here because we knew in this transition we're going to do the ceiling similar to how we did the very back of the bus and that is we're going to lay down a quarter inch underlayment part over this this is metal again we have ceratex um, just a thin layer of ceratex over the metal and so what we're going to do is lay this down so we're going to have a quarter inch again and then another a finishing quarter inch that'll come down so the one challenging part up here is it is you know there is kind of a curve to it and it's, it's pretty a pretty big curve but the biggest part is this thing right here so it goes flat and then it comes up i don't know if that's easy to see so what we're thinking about doing on this is just cutting a piece that sort of works as a one big piece that just goes here so um so this would just be sort of a solid it would kind of look like an extension to the cabinet going forward. And then these pieces are just gonna go right into that. And so there'll be a nice um, sort of bevel and then an ending right at that. So <laughs> that's the goal, we'll see how it works out. So that's our approach for the front of the bus. All right, so the first thing we're doing is trying to create like a reference point for ourselves to know how far out we want that um, that bottom piece to stick out. And it's not a, it's a curve under there. It's like just, it's like a rounded edge. So there's not really like a distinct end point for where that piece of wood would go to. So we're just trying to make one for ourselves here. All right, so we're continuing work on the upper ceiling here. And yesterday we got as far as sort of rough cutting this piece of wood. So what we did is we started out, we made a bunch of measurements and then determined that, hey, at the widest point, it's about seven inches. And so we cut a rectangular piece to seven inches by the width. And I don't remember, I think it was 60 inches or 72 inches or something. But we cut that and then we brought it in here and just said, okay, is, is it even close? And the first thing we had to do is this angle here, we had to deal with that. So we had to cut that in, and that's what this is up here, just to get it to fit in place. And then we pushed it. So it's hard to tell, but it arcs like this. And so we pushed it up into the corner and then pushed it up. And of course that bowed it and things like that. And so then what we had to do is get this exact angle right because when it's pushed up and it's bowing it changes this angle a little bit so we got that angle right and then we went back and fine-tuned this angle and then what was left was in the back there was a gap in the center about maybe three quarters of an inch um, away from the wall just because of the way it was flexing the way this sits all that kind of stuff so we started marking and you can kind of see on the board where we start marking. Um, and what we did was we then, from this point to the end point, we took off whatever that was measured and same with that side. So that got it closer. And then um, what we did then was we pushed it up and it was a closer match. So then we made a few more marks of where we needed to sand in which direction. And so we put it on the belt sander or on the uh, bench sander, sand it a little bit more, fit, sand, fit, sand, fit. And now we've got it to where it's pretty close. So if we put this guy up here, um, whoops, we'll bring it in, put him in the corner, put that guy in the corner and then bend up. You can see that it's a pretty good fit. That's a, it's, um, it's got a little tiny gap, which we want because this needs to be removable. And so now what we have to do is come in and trace the contour of this flat part. So this flat part, unfortunately, um, is also contoured in a separate way. So the way that one's going is in the middle, it's pretty narrow, and then it kind of smiles out like that. So I'm, I'm going extreme so you can see, but it, it's wider on the sides than it is in the middle. So we're going to have to try to 
hold this piece up there and we're thinking we're going to try to run a short pencil just to give us an approximation of the line over the top and then we'll rough cut that see where we're at sand fit sand fit and <laughs> hopefully in a couple hours we'll have a piece that fits, a couple of hours. <laughs> that oh. fits this exactly oh my so gosh. that's the plan Okay, so we got the piece finished and we've screwed it in now. It's very secure. We used a whole bunch of screws. Um, it did take a couple of times of coming in and sanding and things like that. But now that this is up, we can kind of, we can start to get a feel for what this might look like. So if I push this up here and make it fold with the transition, we can see that that makes a pretty good um, transition there. We'll fill it with caulk and, 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 you know, kind of get it a little bit more perfect, but, um, we'll have one more layer of this stuff. We'll go under here. So this will have a layer like this. Um, and this will just, we'll brad nail in and then we'll, you know, kind of fix up all the little brad nail holes, but it should look pretty clean. And then so that our seam, against the back should look pretty nice. So again, this piece is removable, so we kind of had to keep all that in mind. But the the part we'll probably be making next is the furring strips that come down and will meet this and then so that this type of wood here can be brad nailed to that. So anyway, that's the next step. All right, so the under layer is done. So it took us a little while to do. Um, we've got the lights, you can see the lights in here. So there'll be a passenger and a driver's light that will go in here. 
and we really just did it the same as the rear bedroom where we just took each piece and measured and used our tool to flatten it out and then make a line. Um, so now comes the finishing piece, which will be this white piece, and we're, hope we're hoping that it lines up pretty well with what's in there. So anyway, this will be a little bit more obvious, so we're going to see if we need a trim piece here or not. We're going to determine that after we finish. But anyway, we're going to start that layer now, and the first piece we're going to cut is this bottom one, and it has to come out just slightly so that it can it can match up exactly right. So this side turned out really well. Um, this side was a bit more tricky because this goes in deeper and the corner starts to, to make an edge here. So I'm not sure what we're going to do here yet. I'm not super happy with this. This piece was really hard to cut. It, this piece alone probably took us like three hours. So, and I'm still not happy with it. So we'll see um, what we do with this piece. We're probably going to have to trim it down and sand it a bit just to get it to lay so it's nice and smooth. But anyway, um, this is how it's going. We'll probably tackle this piece next, the piece underneath. And we've gone through and um, we've modeled a little bit with these pieces to try to determine how much longer that needs to be. And we've determined that's about 3 sixteenths or so. So anyway, we did like this and then tried to say, okay, how much further out do we need it to come? Um, so anyway, that's the, that's the next thing we're gonna work on. All right, so we've finished with the planking. So cutting all the planks, installing all the planks, they're all glued and brad nailed in. And you can see the curve actually turned out really nicely. Um, we're glad we did this piece underneath. It would have been very difficult to try to get that to curve up and over, but this did make a nice lip under here. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge to get the spacing exactly right. And we did have to shim a few of those to get it to line up exactly end to end. But we're also going to sand those all smooth and fill them with um, caulking and stuff like that. And so the very next part will be installing and testing these lights just to make sure those work and they're out of the way. Once we've got those installed, we'll go ahead and caulk these the same way that we've done all of this stuff. So we'll caulk and fill it and then paint it all. And that'll be it for the ceilings.
All right, so we're done. Um, we've completed this front area. We did spend quite a bit of time in these corners and on this bottom part, just sanding everything with um, with a real small multi-tool that vibrates back and forth. We went in and cleaned up all of the edges so that it would be perfectly smooth. And then we went through and cocked everything up. Um, we did end up putting a piece of trim here. It, it looked pretty good, but we thought it would look a little better just with a small piece of trim that connected the two um, cabinets together. So we went ahead and did that. And obviously the lights are working. They're on their own switches and we tested all the different wiring and everything like that. And so um, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. It actually turned out much better than we thought it would, especially in these trickier transitions. We weren't 100% sure how we were gonna handle that. And we were kind of okay with it being a little off, but we're even better with it being almost perfect. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, it's, it's pretty much done. We've painted, the paint is actually even still wet, so it may look a little like shiny and not shiny, but um, we're gonna call this project done and move on to the next one.